Well, I'm glad that you're here. That's enough. Be seated for a second. Open your hearts and minds with mine as we ask God to bless this word this day. Let us pray. Loving and gracious and holy one, thank you for your presence, that holy divine spirit that lives in this place and within each and every one of us. Open our hearts and minds, O God, so that we may be mindful of your presence one more time. And through that opening of our spirit, engage with that Holy Spirit that is present now and nurture us, bless us, and affirm us, we ask. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. So we've been preaching a series of sermons here at Cathedral of Hope called the Holy Spirit. And throughout this season of May, we have been focusing our attention on this essential part of what is the Trinity, the Creator who is God, Jesus, and of course the Holy Spirit. And today is Trinity Sunday. It is the Sunday after Pentecost, the Sunday when we acknowledge the presence of the Trinity in our lives, the Trinity as a part of our faith. And although we don't understand the Trinity, even though we have many different theologies around the Trinity, it is that part of the, the Godhead that we acknowledge that is still present with us today. It is the Holy Spirit that was poured out upon those early disciples that transformed them and empowered them to be the disciples of Christ. It is that Holy Spirit that gave them focus and gave them purpose and gave them power. And those are the elements of the Holy Spirit that we have focused on specifically over the last few Sundays here at Cathedral of Hope. Last Sunday, we acknowledged the power of the Holy Spirit. And we certainly acknowledged and felt the power of the Holy Spirit in this place. Not only were we uh, overfilled to capacity on that Sunday, which is so much like Easter and Christmas and all of those other majestic events, but we also closed out that powerful service uh, with the setting off of those wonderful cannons that rejuvenated us and sent us out into the world with joy and with fear of trepidation. What a, what a wonderful way in which we get to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And today we come to think about that Holy Spirit's presence and that invitation for each and every one of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be filled to overflowing with that power and that grace, and to be filled in such a way that our lives would be changed, our lives would be different. You see, this whole understanding of Christianity as a lifestyle choice is understanding that Christianity should make a difference in our lives. That this faith that we experience and this faith that we share is one that transforms us. It turns us around. It causes our lives to be upside down. And wherever we thought we had everything sorted out, the Holy Spirit comes in as the trickster. The Holy Spirit comes in as the one who wants to have a joke with us sometimes. But the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and fills us up so that our lives are changed. Our lives are turned around. That certainly was the experience of those early disciples as they witnessed the Holy Spirit's presence in their lives. Their lives got turned around. Their lives got changed. In the twinkling of an eye, the Apostle Paul would remind us that their lives would get changed. And if we come into this place this morning with open hearts and with open minds and with an open attitude to who this God is, I truly believe that the Holy Spirit that fills us up will change us again today will certainly make a difference in our lives and will certainly empower us to find true meaning of life, purpose, true meaning of our own experience and our own understanding of God and will cause us one more time to be filled to overflowing. In our reading this morning, we heard how in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul would challenge those disciples and those early believers to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to know that if we were truly being filled with that Spirit, that even in our sufferings, even in the times of doubt, even in the times of, of trying to work it out for ourselves, we would see that that perseverance of the Holy Spirit that fills us this morning would develop some things in us. In fact, the Apostle Paul says that suffering brings about endurance, and endurance brings about perseverance, and perseverance brings about character. 
It is sometimes the hardest times in our lives that we call upon and see the transforming power of the Holy Spirit encouraging us and acknowledging that transformation can happen even in the most of the darkest moments of our soul. If I look back in my own experience, I can tell that there are times in my life when it seemed like the hardest, but those hardest times were when I had to call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit more and more and more. When I felt like giving up, it was the Holy Spirit that kept me going. And I pray that that's our experience this morning, that wherever we are in our own spiritual journeys, if we're facing some hard times or if we are just full of the joys of the Holy Spirit, that we would know that in every season of our lives, this Holy Spirit comes to fill us and cause a transformation in our lives and our experience. Now, of course, if we are called to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then that also means that we are called to be emptied sometimes. I, I think sometimes we forget that we need to empty ourselves in order to be filled up over and over again. And, and many of us, uh, uh, perhaps I should just speak for myself this morning, and if you get something out of it, great. But, but I think many of us, um, or, or myself, uh, find at times that we have filled ourselves up with so much stuff in our lives that it's hard to let go and let God. That, that many times we have filled ourselves with, with so many preconceived ideas or, or so many preconceived wonders or, or so many things of, of, of the circumstances of our lives that it's hard to let go of some of that stuff, to purge some of that stuff in our lives in order that we can get filled up again. Especially those of us who have been around church for a long time. It, it's so easy for us to get stuck in our own theology or, or stuck in our own lives or stuck in our own experience. And it's hard then sometimes to think about how we can be changed. We as a church talk about a God who is still speaking a God who is still living, a God who is still with us. We, we speak about this God who is transforming our very existence. But how can we be transformed into a new experience if we're holding on to past experience? How, how can we be transformed to a new way of life or to a new way of understanding God if we are just completely fixed on one way of knowing God? That's certainly the experience of the Christian church today. It seems to me that in our Christian churches today, we believe that there's only one way of knowing God. And often we use our way of knowing God as the way of knowing God. And we relent and we sometimes even get a, a little bit uh, protective of our theology when somebody else sees God differently or experiences God differently. But the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives encourages us to always be questioning, always be challenging, always be thinking about who this God is and how God shows up in our lives. It is that experience of God that invites us today to think about where we are and what are the things in our lives that we need to let go of in order that we can be filled up again. When I was uh, a youngster, we would uh, often have little nursery rhymes that would help us. And I remember a nursery rhyme that I was taught as a young, a young, young, young kid. My mom would, would show us and she said, I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Anybody know this one? <laughs> I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle, here's my... Oh my God, I must be a sugar bowl. No. See, that's the way the Holy Spirit teaches us. Reminds us that we can't just be like this, we have to be like this. <laughs> but, but if you're just like this, nothing happens. The only way that we can be filled up to overflowing is to tip over and let some of it out. Let out some of the hurt let out some of the anger, let out some of the things that have caused us not to believe again, to let out some of those experiences that perhaps we are holding on to and no longer serve us, holding on to belief that no longer fits our theology. 
You see, the gift of the Holy Spirit is a gift that needs to be poured out, not just upon the world, but it needs to be poured out from us so that the Holy Spirit can fill us again and again and again. If we're holding on to things for for tradition or we're holding on to things because they've become a crutch or we're holding on to things because they, they no longer serve us, then we are no longer allowing the refreshing breath of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, the breath of God to fill us again and again and bring that joy that we hope for in the Holy Spirit. We are called to empty ourselves with the good things and the things that no longer benefit or serve us so that we can be renewed, renewed every day in the twinkling of an eye. But if we're just holding on to this stuff as, a, as something that we've perhaps come so accustomed to or, or we've, we're holding on to things because they, they, they become a crutch in our lives or we wouldn't know what to do if we didn't have them in our lives anymore, I've met people over and over again who hold on to bitterness and anger because they don't know what they would be able to do if they let go of their bitterness and anger. It it meant that they would need to have a transformed life. The Holy Spirit instructs us today to let go of those things so that in letting go, we can be filled up. We can fill ourselves afresh and anew with that sweet aroma of the grace of God. That's the gift and the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the life of this church and and in the lives of us as individuals. To be able to be renewed and to be refilled means that we need to empty and get rid of some stuff so that we can find the purpose and the meaning and the joy and the grace of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps if we're not finding joy in our lives today, perhaps we're being challenged today to let go of some of those things that are not giving us joy. Perhaps we're called to let go of some of that theology that tells us that we are nasty and that we are evil and that we have a a toxic experience of religion. Perhaps today we're being invited to let go of some of that stuff so that we can open ourselves to the joy of the day. One of the reasons why I invited you to to share just a little greeting at the beginning of the sermon was so that we could let go of some of that stuff of, of the tradition and just feel the freedom in this room and the beauty of the person who is sat next to you this day. To be filled and to be filled and to be filled over and over again with that sweet fragrance of Jesus Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit offers to us this day to be filled, and that is what the Holy Spirit offered to those disciples and to those early believers. They went out into the world and emptied themselves of the good news so that they could be filled up again. They had to let go of what had just happened in Jerusalem when Jesus was crucified. They had to let go of the fear of what it meant to have a transformed life, that they would have to live no longer with Jesus physically present in their lives, but the Holy Spirit would be the advocate, the receiver, the one who would go before them. They had to learn to trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. As we come this morning, Cathedral of Hope, to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in this church, to know that the gift of the Holy Spirit is with purpose and with meaning, to know that the gift of the Holy Spirit offers to us new life and new birth. That's been the three sermons that we have preached in these last few Sundays. Today, that new birth is something that we want. We need to empty ourselves and to be filled afresh and anew and to be constantly filled and emptied. Not one of us knows that if we drive here in Dallas, that you can't just run a car on empty gas. You need to go to the pumping station and pump some more in. Well, it's a bit like us. We can't run on empty. We need to be filled up over and over and over. And in order to be filled up, we need to empty ourselves on a daily basis so that the Holy Spirit can visit us every single day and renew us. It is in that renewal that we find this gift of joy. 
I pray for every single one of us, and myself included, that we would not take anything for granted about this faith that we believe, but that rather we would come with our questions and come with our experience so that we can be renewed and filled again this day. And on this day, as we gather one with the other, find that new meaning of what it means to live in the Spirit, a Spirit that is within us. May God bless us as we empty ourselves of all the stuff in our lives so that we are ready to be filled up again and again. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope. May you find purpose and meaning in what we hear this day. God bless you. Amen. When I was asked to present the offertory this morning,